The clip that I want to color grade here today was actually shot on a sunrise on Bali in the rice fields. Definitely a nice location and a nice time of the day and what you can already see in the clip is that I shot against the sun and because of that I overexposed the clip a bit and I did that because I don't want to get so dark midtones and shadows because then I start losing detail there and I probably get noise and so on and that would make the footage look very bad. So in that case it's really okay to just clip the highlights like burn the complete sky so that you don't have any details there anymore. It still looks nice as you can see and then you can do a lot more with the footage because you still have enough details in the shadows and in the midtones. So what I also did with that footage I definitely like what I would always recommend I shot in the cine like it's, it's a color profile that you can choose in pro mode and on the DJI Osmo Pocket and that profile gives you a bit more dynamic range and because the image is flatter it also lets you do more in post-production with it. Another thing that I did I shot in 4k 60 um, doesn't have much to do with color grading but I just want to mention that here because that makes it possible for you to slow the clip down later as you can see right now when I play that you can see it's slow motion and it looks very nice. There were some slight jitters in the footage and they're already a bit smoothed out because of the slow motion. I could also apply some stabilization now in Final Cut to make it look even better but for now that's okay. So I would say let's go into color grading now that you know everything about the clip and how I shot it and how I set everything up. So the first thing that I want to do here is that, you, that I turn my RGB parades and my vector scope and so on. So how you do that, I will turn it off now to show you. You go on view, then you go to video scopes and there it is already but normally you get something like that here like normally I think you have the histogram here which is not perfect to color grade so what I do is I go, uh, I click on view and I turn that triple thing here on the three blocks and here I choose the top one to RGB overlay on the waveform. Here you can see waveform and then RGB overlay. In the middle I like to have vector scope because the vector scope is a good indicator of my saturation and where my colors sit and the RGB parade um, it's also a nice indicator for white balancing. So but the Scope's actually very important, especially the waveform, because there you can see where your exposure sits and that you don't clip your highlights anymore or that you lose some detail in the shadows. Okay, but now let's start grading or color correcting actually. So I click on my color tool here in Final Cut and then I go to color wheels. And now as you can see, like we could make the clip a little bit darker. What makes it easier to see that is if I simply pull down the saturation of my clip uh, completely because then you can see that it's all level here in the RGB parade and yeah, in the overlay as well so in the waveform monitors and here I can now darken this is actually wrong so I can click on shadows and here I can darken my shadows so I can bring that down a little bit until it's just before zero I would say that's actually a little bit too white here you can see already that I'm clipping the shadows and I don't want to go all under zero. So let's bring it up a little bit again. I would say that's around good. And the highlights, like usually you would also adjust the highlights here, but in that case I will leave it because it's already at perfectly 100 and it's also burned out there so there's nothing I can do about it or I need to do. But what I also want to do, I want to go into midtones and I want to bring that down here. By the way, you can actually do exactly the same with the color board. Like here under exposure, you have shadows, midtones, highlights, so you can adjust it here too. You have saturation, so here you can take the saturation off or make it like increase it. And you also have um, options for color. But I personally prefer to have the color wheels because they are a bit more intuitive for me. But as a beginner, it might be that the color board is better for you. So let's remove that again and now you can see I also brought my midtones a bit down and now my exposure and my contrast already looks a, looks a bit better than before. Like let's see before and after. Of course I can bring my saturation up again. Can actually increase it a little bit. Yeah, that's good. So now we can already see before and after. Already looks a bit better but of course not perfect and one issue that I have here is that my white balance is not perfect. It already looks pretty good, like in the highlights here it's 
definitely white. My screen is also calibrated, so I can really see that this is white here. And um, the midtones also look around good. You can see that it's a bit yellow here in the midtones. Like usually white means that it's equally balanced there, but here you can see a little bit of yellow and that is the rice fields here, which is okay in that case because the rice fields, well, they are a bit yellowy greenish, so that's fine. I will make them a bit more bluish later. I will show you how that works. But the mo biggest white balance problem here is that we have we don't have enough blue in the shadows. So what you do to resolve that is you click on shadows and then you drag in the circle here, you drag this center circle into the direction of blue. And when you watch here, you can see that it goes up. But the problem here is it shouldn't go up too far because otherwise your shadows will become a blue tint and that doesn't look nice. It's not what you want, of course. So really also watch in the image if it gets a blue tint or not. In that case, I would actually say that it looks quite good so far. Also want to drag it a bit down to equalize the red and greens in the shadows. And I would say that looks quite good here. Now you can see that in the shadows it's equal. That's important when white balancing. A good indicator that your white balance is good is that your shadows are at around the same level and that your highlights are at around the same level. Because in the midtones you usually have some like colors that dominate a bit more and others don't. So in the midtones it's a bit harder to see, especially in travel videography because we can't use any white balance cards or whatever there, but that's more professional stuff. So I would say that's already good. Sometimes it's a bit hard to equalize your shadows. So what you can do to do that also is to use your color curves and then you can maybe either click here or you can click there. Just make a point. Let's do that here now. And then you can just drag the shadows up to introduce more blue. So that's quite easy, I think. But of course, I don't want to do that. And just to keep that a bit further here, how white balancing works, you can see in that circle here that you have red, you have yellow, you have green, you have blue, you have purple. And when you have a color tint in your image, you always want to move the slider in the opposite direction. So let's say if I, uh, I propose fully introduce a red tint right now into my image, and then I would like make another color wheel here, then I would need to drag the slider in the opposite direction to equalize that. You can actually see that like when you watch in the RGB parade here, you can see that here's the red a bit too high now. And by dragging the slider into the other direction, I equalize it. It's not perfectly equalized right now, but if I drag it a bit more, then it's perfectly equalized. And the thing here is that in the shadows, so we had it before that the blue was actually too low. It was lower than red and green. So in that case, I had to introduce blue because the blue was too low. I want, wanted to give it more blue. So you th need to think in terms of that. It's a bit difficult at the beginning, but just really like get over yourself, play a bit around with that, and you will learn it pretty quick. Like white balancing is really not a problem. Sometimes when the overall white balance is not good, what also can work is, let me just introduce a bit more saturation again that you can simply use the temperature and tint sliders here to make it good. They basically work around the same, but for me it's a bit easier to see in the in this um, color circle where I can or where I need to push my colors. So now that the white balance is correct, what I also want to do is I want to make the rice a bit greener. So what I do to do that is I go to use saturation curves. It's actually very easy and it's so powerful. You just go in the U versus U curve and you click this picker here, this color picker. And then you go to your image, you click and you drag a bit to the outside to mark that part of the image where you want to change the color. And then it marks this area here perfectly. So now I drag that down a bit and you can see already that it gets more greener and less yellowish, right? So I would say that looks quite good here. What I also want to do, I want to apply an S curve. An S curve is there to introduce a bit more contrast into your image without like um, crushing your shadows or highlights. So, and how you do it is you simply apply the color curves here and then 
you click here you drag that a little bit down not too much and then you go in the highlights on the same line just on the opposite side and drag it up just drag the shadows down here a bit more so i would say that looks good and this is a before and after just with the s curve you can also see a complete before and after now so this was our original image and that's what we did so far i would say that already looks a bit better and right now we finished our base correction i would say the s curve is already something like a look great it depends on how how you want to finally look at if you want to have it a bit more contrasty or not but especially the first two here the color wheels and the u saturation curves those are those is our base grade so there we define the white balance and the contrast and the exposure and this is what we did already so now you want to go into your final look and to be honest i know you're a bit more at the beginning right now so let's keep it simple and just apply a lot it's totally okay you must not, do, not be a professional from day one to create your own looks or whatever it's totally okay to use lots so how you do it is you go to color and there you find custom LUT and this effect you can use the choose custom LUT function here to open your finder and then you can choose LUTs there I already have them included here my own LUT pack it is so it's a Tange LUT pack stands for teal and orange and that's what it basically does is it pulls or pushes all your colors in the spaces of teal and orange which in that case is not actually not that good because green is somewhere between teal and orange so this look wouldn't work perfect but i did some i created some LUTs in there to solve that so let's just apply my no my normal tange green LUT because this is my favorite as you can see here right now like it totally makes the makes the rice fields too reddish like too warm doesn't look good I mean it looks good but it doesn't look natural anymore so i don't want to do that so this is why i choose another lot of my pack and this is the gt for green tones gtc for green tones cold and as you can see i get more greenish green tones looks a lot better i would say but let's try another one uh gte for warm green tones i oh, know this was blue sorry i wanted to take that hmm, that's also quite nice what I also want to have is a bit more blue in my shadows and this is something nice about the LUT pack I created here. GTWSH is for green tones and bluer shadows. And I would say that looks quite nice but it's too strong. This look is too strong so that's why I bring the mix a bit down here. Mm, let's just type it in 0.5. And I would say that looks pretty good of course maybe i could do even 0.6 yeah i think that's perfect so and as you can see that already looks pretty good this is my final look what i also want to do with it to make it a bit more cinematic is to apply a letterbox and you go to all for that i don't know in which folder it is and then i just type in let and there it is letterbox and i go to 2.35 and as you can see right now we have this nice cinematic aspect ratio that looks cool love it what i could also do i can animate it now so i can like bring the camera a bit down here and then to the last frame and bring that up and now you can see over the wall image that it looks like the camera would go down right Okay, that's it already. I especially like the letterbox effect for that animation stuff because that makes it easier, especially with a Osmo Pocket. If you're in tilt lock mode, you cannot do that up and downward movement that easy as long as you don't have this wheel. I don't have it, so that comes in quite handy. But apart from that, when I just turn the effects off right now and we see how the image looked before and if we see how it looks now, it's more contrasty, the colors are on point. It's great i like it like that and of course i used my own lut pack right now so if you like that look and of course it's not the best scene for my lut pack because especially in cities and so on the orange and teal comes more out but if you like that you find a link in the description below where you can download it 
And apart from that, of course, you don't need to use that LUT pack. There are millions of LUTs on the internet. There are free ones, there are paid ones. So just look around, look what you like and just use the look that you want to have for your footage. I will also create another tutorial soon where I show you how to create your own look and um, save that into a LUT so that you can apply that to your footage all the time again. So if you're interested in that, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And apart from that, I would also like to hear your opinion. What did you like about that video? Do you have some suggestions to make it better? And what topics are you most interested in? What videos would you like to see in the future? Please leave it in the comments below. I will answer every comment. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video.